Hey guys, 412 Sports Cards here today, back with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about collecting and investing RPAs, and why I think that Flawless has the best RPAs for both collectors and investors. So, um, how did I get the idea for this video? Well, last night, an auction for Jaron Jackson, Rookie Flawless Patch Auto, ended. Fortunately, I did not get it. It went higher than I thought it should, but I've kind of been... They don't come up on the market that often. And I was digging in, doing my research into Flawless, and I really found that Flawless seems to be a severely undervalued brand. And that sounds absolutely insane, but I'm gonna talk through why. Um, and while this video, I mean, you guys might know I'm a Jaren collector. So while this video and that hunt for that Flawless RPA was inspired by like a collecting mindset, I think a lot of the lessons I'm going to give today uh, have significant translation into investing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the importance of the RPA to the collector slash investor. I think there are two kind of breeds of cards today, right? You got kind of like the regular base card, not really base, but like parallel, non-auto, non-patch cards. Um, so you got like your Prism Silver, probably the Crown Jewel, right? So like here's my Jaren Prism Silver that I'm keeping for my PC. Um, as a Jaren Auto in the back, in case you didn't know. But on a floorboard uh, from the Memphis Grizzlies. But anyways, sorry, I got distracted. Um, this is a nice Prism Silver, one of the premier cards. Um, the other, I have mine off of PSA right now, but here's a jaw. I have a Jaren off of PSA, but a court side. Just another rare parallel card. Um, kind of like more of that regular card type, type of trend. And then there's the autos, which is a camp of cards we don't hear a lot about in today's marketplace, where it's driven by base cards and parallels. Um, RPAs are king. I happen to think that um, next day autos are pretty cool as well. Uh, they're signed at like the rookie premiere, where Panini takes like pictures of all the rookies, and they hand them those cards. So some, they're some of the first cards they sign. So I think that's really cool. But anyways, I digress. Um, so the, the journey was with Jaren, I had the court side, I had the Prism Silver, and I knew National Treasures was gonna to be too expensive for me. And when I was looking for an RPA, I saw a Flawless and I looked at it and I was shocked to find out how affordable they were. So we're gonna get into point one of why Flawless is better than NT, and it's that Flawless is cheaper than National Treasures while also having a lower print run. So I'll pull up some pictures for you guys on here so you can see, because I don't have any, but Flawless RPAs, um, at least in 2018, which was Jaren's rookie year, come in two varieties. So you've got a horizontal and a vertical, and both are only numbered to 25 or less. So you don't have that many of them at all. NT, you're having uh, looking at about 99 copies of a horizontal and 99 copies of a vertical. Um, the vertical is the true RPA, I would say, in both. So last night, a horizontal Jaren closed at 610, above the typical range of comps of like 400 to 450 for that Jaren patch auto. Um, for reference, a horizontal NT RPA, which is not the true RPA and sells at a significant discount because of it, is in the 800 to $1,000 range and is numbered out of 99, not 25. So there are way more of them. They're way more expensive. And I think this, this is kind of interesting that... Flawless is the higher SRP set, so like Panini intended it to be the higher end product, but National Treasures has somehow become the hobby standard. And I don't, I nobody knows, I mean, how this happened. It's kind of the same way that the Prism Silver became the thing. Um, actually, it's not even that way, because that was the flagship set. This is even more confusing. But regardless, I think that Flawless is not only cheaper, but I think it has a nicer, more premium uh, look. And also the vertical Flawless patch autos sell for about the same as the horizontal. So if you're into vertical RPAs, um, I think you can get a really good deal on a Flawless versus an NT, where it would probably be six to 7,000 for a Jaren, as opposed to like maybe five to 600 for a Flawless, which is insane. But here's the kicker. This is the big, big point I wanted to drive home with you guys. Game used, player worn. So both of these jerseys that I have back here, like this, um, this LeBron and this and this Kobe right here, are are game used. They're game used jerseys. 
I don't have any player worn with me right now, but they're like ones just worn at events. They're not worn in games. And NT is using player worn jerseys. So they're not jerseys that people have actually worn in games. And Flawless is getting you rookie patch autos with game used jerseys. Now, obviously, it makes sense, right? Rookie year products, it's hard to come by game used jerseys often because they haven't played any games at the beginning of the year, you know, when they're trying to make these products. But Flawless comes late in the production um, run for each calendar year. And it actually, I think is, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, the only rookie patch auto that has game used jersey in it. I think that sets it so much apart from National Treasures, both from the standpoint of a collector who would like to have a game used piece of jersey in their card, and for the investor who, especially as we've talked about in previous videos, like a flight um, to scarcity and rarity, want the highest quality cards to hold on to for their investments. I think that the game used jersey makes it worth so much more to the end collector and probably also to the investor just because it makes it a super premium card. I think that's a, a big, big deal that not many people talk about how nice it is to have a game used jersey in a rookie RPA. Very, very hard to come by. Plus the fact they're only 25 of each. So, I mean, well, they're like a fifth out of 15 parallel and an out of five and a one of one and out of 10, but NT has all those too. It just starts out of 99. So why flawless? Um, why RPAs? I see a lot of room for growth in RPAs. Since COVID started, we've seen this boom in these base cards, base parallels. I mean, these cards, so I, this is when I subbed, for example. Uh, bought, I subbed this in like January or so, and these were like 35 bucks a card. And now they're like over 100. These are probably like 125. So, I mean, and Jaren didn't necessarily do a whole lot in that time. Cards just exploded. But, so you had that happening with these, like, parallels. But you did not have that with these rookie patch autos, I don't think. Certainly not to the same magnitude, especially of guys who are not in the 2019 uh, class. I think that, w as we've also considered the rise of rarity, the rise of cards like these uh, select court sides, the rookie patch autos from Flawless should be gaining traction. They're incredibly rare. We're talking 25 of each parallel. Of 25 is the base set for the horizontal and the vertical. It's exceedingly rare, and I think that investors um, who have high conviction in players are eventually going to start to latch on to these, um, these investments. So essentially, I like the RPA space as an investor and a collector, and I think Flawless is the best one to capitalize on it. I know I couldn't get one last night, but I'm going to be on the hunt in the future to get myself some Jaren Flawless RPAs, or just one for my collection. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. Um, we kind of branched out a little bit. Not too much. Stick with basketball. But anyways, if you liked if you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot to the channel. We're on the hunt now. We got to 250. We're on the hunt now for like getting to 500. And um, I'll catch you next time.